guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amina and this is Experiencing Fragrances with Amina. I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you look down below, you'll see that I finally broke 500 subscribers. Yay! Again, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for constantly supporting, constantly coming back to watch my content. I really appreciate it. It's always so interactive in the comment section below and I enjoy hearing your feedback. So thank you guys so much. I have no words, really. In order to celebrate this special milestone, I want to do a special giveaway and if you guys know me you know that I am obsessed with Francesca Bianchi so the giveaway will be a complete discovery set of Francesca Bianchi's work <laughs> I'm so excited one of you guys will be able to experience and explore the special 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 fragrances by Francesca Bianchi and I'm so stoked I can't wait whoever wins you have to come back to me and we have to discuss, okay? We have to discuss how they made you feel. Did it tell you a story? Did it take you somewhere? How did it make you feel, okay? So whoever wins, make sure you come back to me and, or in the comment section and let us know how you felt about them. I'm so excited. For whoever wins, I can't wait. I can't wait! Ah! Okay, so the goal for this video was to tell you guys about the giveaway and to also kind of rank my favorite Francesca Bianchi fragrances. I don't have the entire collection, but I have sampled the entire collection. The ones that I absolutely love, I have four bottles of. I only don't have about three fragrances out of her entire collection. So I have everything else except for three, I believe. I think. With this ranking uh, video, I'm just gonna name the fragrances and just describe them, of course, in the order from least favorite to most favorite. If you know me, I think you already know which one's gonna be my favorite fragrances. If you have an idea, go ahead and comment down below which fragrance is gonna take the number one spot. You better not get it wrong. You have to know. You must know. Everyone knows. I just can't shut up about it. I always talk about it. So Francesca in total has 10 fragrances in her collection. So coming in at number 10 is going to be Angel's Dust. Um, Angel's Dust is personally not my favorite. It's a delicate powdery scent. It's very pretty but it's just not my style but I know a lot of people who love and rave about it. Yeah it's very very delicate, very soft. Um, I think it may lie on the more mass appealing of all of her fragrances, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I like it, but I don't like it enough to invest in a full bottle, which is why I do not have a full bottle of that one. The number nine spot is going to be Etruscan Water. Etruscan Water is Francesca's dream. I would even go as far as to describe it as a sheep style fragrance. It has oak moss, it has a lot of green notes, bergamot, citrus, it also has petit grain and civet so it's definitely a unique take on a green fragrance. It's actually a fragrance that is growing on me and I am contemplating adding it to my collection. The fragrance at the number 8 spot is a fragrance that kind of made me fall in love with Francesca Bianchi's work. It was the first fragrance that I actually tried fully. It may even be the first animalic fragrance that I've tried. Loss of Heaven is an animalic fragrance that has some floral notes, it has some spicy notes. It's a very intimate fragrance. Loss of Heaven also has this dirty orris butter that is kind of Francesca's signature. She has it or she uses it in most of her fragrances that give it that signature scent. Lost in Heaven to me was the perfect fragrance for me to start off with because it had animalic notes in it but it wasn't so so intense. Definitely interesting and I became really really intrigued and just went in head first with all of her other fragrances. So Lost in Heaven for me was my introduction to Francesca's fragrances. So coming in at the number seven spot is Sex and the Sea. Just a regular one, Sex and the Sea, the OG Sex and the Sea. That one, guys, I, so this, here is where the ranking gets very difficult because I love Sex and the Sea so much. I love it very, very much, but I mean, 
and the collection that has so many great fragrances you know a fragrance has to be you know in the seventh spot in the eighth spot in the ninth spot doesn't mean that i don't like it because i love it but it just has to be placed somewhere and i happen to like others more so yeah there's that so sex and the sea sex and the sea is exactly that it's sex and the sea it kind of reminds me of pina colada it's so sensual and it's definitely one of the more unique tropical scents that i've ever tried so sex and the sea is coming in at number seven i love sex and the sea so much but it has there has to be a number seven and you know I, that's why I don't like doing countdowns or rankings because I get stressed out because I love them all. It's like having 10 um, children, right? 10 children that you love almost equally. Maybe, you know, the one that you put in at number eight gave you a bad attitude one time and it really got on your nerves. But that's the only reason why you put them at number eight, you know? It's just really hard. You can't rank. It's hard to rank a lot of your favorite things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, let's move on. Sex and the Sea. Sex and the Sea is just that. It's sexy. It's salty. It's full of ambergris. There's floral notes of mimosa, maybe frangipani. I have to check. Um, it's animalic. It has pineapple and coconut. It's super sensual, salty. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So as soon as I tried Sex in the Sea, I knew right away that I needed to try Sex in the Sea Neroli because I love Neroli. And Sex in the Sea Neroli is number six. Sex in the Sea Neroli is number six. So Sex in the Sea Neroli is basically the same as the original Sex in the Sea, but with the added brightness of Neroli. I do like Sex in the Sea Neroli slightly more than the original Sex in the Sea. Both are great, but I feel like um, Sex in the Sea Neroli just has that, that lift of that beautiful, soft, sweet greenness that just works so well. I actually have... Um, Sex and the Sea Neroli in the Sublime Oil that Francesca just launched recently. Um, so this is a dry oil that just, I mean, it smells like Sex and the Sea Neroli. I feel like I've been going through it quite a bit. Um, like I said, it's a lightweight dry oil and I use it on my body and my hair. It just leaves this amazing shine and it's moisturizing and it's not greasy at all. And I don't have my bottle of Sex and Scene Rolly with me at the moment, but this is more than enough. More than enough because the concentration of fragrance in here is pretty good. It's not as intense because Francesca's fragrances tend to be, or not tend to be, Francesca's fragrances are all extrates. So this is ne not nearly as potent as her extrates but it does a really good job you know leaving the scent trail and it lasts all day i really am in love with this i'm just waiting for her to make this oil in my favorite fragrance oh i should have wore this today you know what i need to not be afraid and use up the things that i love so i know we all do this in the fragrance community where we fall in love with the fragrance and then we wear it for a while and once we see the level dropping, then we freak out and then we don't use it again because we're afraid that we're going to run out. But then we don't get to enjoy it as much. So I'm just going to use this whenever I want. And if, I, and if I'm done, then I'm done. It's not the end of the world. Anyway, number five. Okay, so number five is going to be the famous The Lover's Tale. The Lover's Tale, I would say, would be maybe one... No. Lover's Tale, I think, is going to be or would be the most challenging for most people. Um, it's a very leathery, animalic scent with some beautiful, beautiful floral notes that to me on my skin just blossom so, ugh, so nicely, just so nicely. Um, it's definitely a sexy scent. It's a loud scent. It's an in-your-face scent. Um, I think it's a piece of art to be honest it's, it's a scent that tells a story and tells a story so well and I love fragrances like that and the lover's tale is just 
And like I said, on my skin, I get more of the floral notes. It's a beautiful combination of floral notes. Um, there's this fuzzy textured leather, which kind of doesn't make any sense, but I think if you smell it, then you can kind of get where I'm going. But the texture of the leather here is very fuzzy, and there's some honey in here. Obviously, there's some civet and I think some castorium as well. So it's a very strong animalic fragrance that's quite sensual, very sexual. And it tells this beautiful story of two lovers that meet after being apart for a long time and I really love it I think it's I think it's a very very special fragrance okay so number four coming in at number four is the dark side I've been craving the dark side for a while and it hurts me that I don't have it and I don't have a sample either <gasps> but lately I don't know why but lately I've been craving the dark side so the dark side is a warm ambery vanilla scent it's sweet it's cozy it's comforting it has this really amazing um, marshmallowy texture it doesn't smell like marshmallows but it has just a really nice soft texture of you know of a marshmallow in between your fingers it's such a gorgeous scent and to me I think it's one behind angels dust is probably the most easy to wear, the most easy to love. It's this balsamic fragrance that just makes my mouth water and it has a lot of elements of sharpness, of roundness, of sweetness, of tartness. It's just a lot going on in it, but it's done so beautiful. I love it. I think the dark side doesn't have any animalic notes, which is another reason why it's just easy to love for anyone. So dark side. And the number three spot is the Black Knight. The Black Knight is this really complex, dark, smoky, leathery scent. It's a hard leathery scent. I said earlier that the Lover's Tail has a fuzzy texture. Well, the Black Knight, the leather in here is very hard, tough tough and hard just a really firm tough leather um and it's not a warm leather it's a cold leather it's smoky and it's also one that tells a story to me one of the most unique leather scents that i've ever tried and that i own it's dark smoky earthy and it's full of vetiver it's just amazing and it's one of those fragrances that i cannot wait to wear once it starts cooling down Ugh. That's the Black Knight. Amazing. Number two. Two. Number two is going to be Francesca's newest release, actually, which is Sticky Fingers. So, Sticky Fingers is a patchouli dominant fragrance. It's so earthy, so potent, so powerful. If you don't like patchouli, beware and stay clear because this one is not taking enemies this one is going in for it it opens up with this dusty you know it's raining wow that's why it's not so hot today cool anyway so it opens up with this really strong dusty patchouli that turns almost chocolatey on my skin usually heavy patchouli scents do turn chocolatey on me and it's just delicious chocolatey um it's not a gourmand scent but it has gourmand qualities because of that chocolatiness and it's one of those fragrances that also just kind of it changes so much and somewhere in the middle of the wearing it does get this really nice sticky texture but it's not sweet it's just a really earthy uh, patchouli scent it has amazing leather notes with tobacco it also has some spicy notes i believe there's cinnamon in there that kind of like comes in and catches you off guard Ugh, i love this scent sticky fingers is also one that i just cannot wait to wear once it starts getting cold it's amazing okay number one guys if you've watched my videos if you've seen my post on instagram then you already know what's at number one my all-time favorite francesca bianchi fragrance is under my skin 
I say this all the time, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this fragrance was made for me. It was. It was made for me. Ugh. For me on my skin, I get this beautiful spice. It just... I don't know how to explain it. It's really hard to explain, but on my skin, I the, the spices in the fragrance really develop into something super sexy and very skin-like. I know for this she meant it to be animalic, but not animalic in an animal way, but animalic in a human way. And I really think she meant animalic in an Amina way. I don't care what nobody says. This fragrance is everything to me. I've gone through, so I've had this bottle for a while, but before I got this bottle, I was wearing it with samples. I would always request samples of under my skin because it's also one of those that I'm scared to run out. I think what I just need to do is buy a second bottle and just be done so I can use this freely. Oh gosh, it has notes of, like I said, some spices, there's some leather in here, some castorium, it's sexy, it's, there's some honey, it's soft, it's sweet, it's animalic, but in the best way, and like I always say this, this just smells like my skin, but better. It smells like my skin, but amplified, like my skin super saiyan i hope that makes sense but this is just my everything and if anyone ever talks down about this we're fighting i'm sorry but we're fighting this is my all-time favorite scent from francesca bianchi it's gorgeous this also to me is another piece of art i feel like it's been getting a lot of buzz lately and a little part of me is upset because you know how like when you have something that you really really love you want to keep to yourself that's how i feel about under my skin i wish it was just mine and mine alone that's how much i love this fragrance and she said that she's going to be working on a sublime oil in under my skin guys once that happens y'all are not going to know what to do with me i'm gonna Y'all won't even know who I am anymore. I'm gonna be a whole different person, and I'm not even gonna lie. I won't be me anymore. I, I, I no, no one can touch me. If I have the sublime oil and under my skin, that is it for everyone. Okay, so that was my ranking of all of Francesca Bianchi's perfumes or fragrances based on my opinions. I know we all have different tastes and all that. Anyway, so I need to actually figure out what the rules are for this giveaway. Okay, so um, the giveaway is going to be limited to certain locations. It's going to be kind of worldwide, but there are just a few places um, that she doesn't ship to. So in the description box would be a list of countries that Francesca Bianchi does ship to. So you have to make sure that you're subscribed to my channel. Uh, make sure you are also following me on my Instagram. I will link all of my details down below. Go ahead and give Francesca Bianchi a follow as well. Uh, and comment down below. Hmm comment down below that you're interested in the giveaway and name one or two fragrances that you want to try the most out of all 10 of them i talked about all 10 of them so which one or two sound the most interesting to you so i can't wait to see what you guys put down below i'm so happy that i get to do my first giveaway and it happens to be like my favorite my favorite perfumer my favorite perfume house <sighs> this is unreal guys i'm just so happy i'm so excited anyway thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you guys being here don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one see ya